Hello, my chicklets. Thank you for stopping by. Today, we will be reading 10 Minutes Musing by Alice Ruth Moore, circa 1895. There was a terrible noise in the schoolyard at intermission. Peeping out the window, the boys could be seen huddled in an immense bunch in the middle of the yard. It looked like a fight, a mob, a knockdown, anything. So we rushed out to the door hastily, fearfully, ready to scold, punish, console, frown, bind up broken heads, or drag wounded forms from the melee as the case might be. Nearly every boy in the school was in that seething, swarming mass, and those who weren't were standing around on the edges, screaming and throwing up their hats in hilarious excitement. It was a mob, a fearful mob, but a mob apparently with a vigorous and well-defined purpose— it was a mob that screamed and howled and kicked and yelled and shouted and perspired and squirmed and wriggled and pushed and threatened and poured itself all seemingly upon some central object. It was a mob that had an aim, that was determined to accomplish that aim, even though the whole azure expanse of the sky fell upon them. It was a mob with set muscles, straining like whip cords, eyes on that central object, and with heads inward and sturdy legs outward, like prairie horses, reversed in a battle. The cheers and hat throwers on the outside were mirthful, but the mob was not. It howled, but howled without any cachinnation. It struggled for mastery. Some fell and were trampled over, some weaker ones were even tossed in the air, but the mob never deigned to trouble itself about such trivialities. It was an interesting, nervous whole, with diverse parts of separate vitality. In alarm, I looked about for the principal. He was standing at a safe distance, with his hands in his pockets, watching the seething mass with a broad smile. At sight of my perplexed expression, someone was about to venture an explanation when there was a wild yell, a sudden vehement disintegration of the mass, a mighty rush and clutch at a dark object bobbing in the air, and the mist cleared from my intellect as I realized it at all. Football. Did you ever stop to see the analogy between a game of football and the interesting little game called life which we play every day? There is one, far-fetched as it may seem, though, for that matter, life's game, being one of desperate chances and strategic moves, is analogous to anything. But if we could get out of ourselves and soar above the world, far enough to view the mass beneath in in its daily struggles, and near enough the hearts of the people to feel the throbs of beneath their boldly carried exteriors, the whole would seem not but such a maddening rush and senseless-looking crushing. We are but children of a larger growth, after all, and our ceaseless pursuing after the baubles of this earth are but the struggles for precedence in the business playground. The football is money. See how the mass rushes after it, everyone so intent upon his pursuit until all else dwindles into a ridiculous nonentity. The weaker ones go on in the mad pursuit and are unmercifully trampled upon. But no matter. What is the difference if the foremost win the coveted prize and carry it off? See the big boy in front, he with iron grip and determined compressed lips? That boy is a type of the big merciless man the grad grind of the latter century. His face is set towards the wall, and even though he may crush a dozen small boys, he'll make his way through the mob and come out triumphant, and he'll be the victor longer than anyone else, in spite of the envy and fighting and pushing about him. To an observer, alike unintelligent about the rules of a football game and the conditions which govern the barter and exchange and fluctuation of the world's money market, There is as much difference between the sight of a mass of boys on a playground losing their equilibrium over a spheroid of rubber and a mass of men losing their coolness and temper and mental and nervous balance on change as there is between a pine sapling and a mighty forest king. Merely a difference of age. The mighty, seething, intensely concentrated mass in its emphatic tendency to one point is the same in the utter disregard of mental and physical welfare. The momentary triumph of transitory possession impress a casual looker-on with the same fearful idea, that the human race, after all, is savage to the core, 
and cultivates its savagery in an inflated happiness at own nearness to perfection. But the bell clangs sharply. The overheated, nervous, tingling boys fall into line, and the sudden transition from massing disorder to military precision cuts short the ten minutes musing. Thank you all for listening. Again, this was Ten Minute Musing. I do hope you all enjoyed it, and I hope you have a wonderful day.